Today we've come out to look at the wild, edible chicory. The entire plant can be used from the flowers, the leaves and the roots. In Latin, it's known as Chicorium intibus. So wild chicory is typically native to Europe and Africa, and some sources say it's been dated back and its use has been seen back up to ancient Egypt. And now it's largely grows all around the planet, uh, in the Americas, in Asia, and is used medicinally worldwide. So as you can see, it's got a wild blue flower. I would even say it's an indigo or purple. So it's also been called blue dandelion or blue weed or blue endive. Endive is a uh, endive in French and uh, Spanish and the, the Latin based languages is um, a bitter vegetable that you typically use and eat in summer to balance out the heat of the sun with the bitter and cooling nature of endives. So since this has been named as well blue dandelion we can see that its taste is somewhat similar to dandelions, that being bitter. And it's a perennial herb, so obviously perennial, if we look at the etymology of the word, per meaning over many years, basically. So it comes back and grows every year. It's known to grow on the sides of roads and really in fields, but basically comes out in the roadside. As you can see here, it's just booming and oozing with this blue indigo beautiful flower all across uh, this hedgerow and this side of the, the road. And it typically flowers, uh, it can come out in, in spring or late spring, so anywhere from April, May, June to the end of summer around October time. Depending on where you are in the world and where it's uh, hottest for you and where the, where the climate, how the climate changes for you based on whether you're in the northern or southern hemisphere. But here in Europe where I am it comes out late spring, it's come out late spring this year and really blooms throughout the whole summer. So yes, you can use the flowers really pretty much from when they start blooming and the whole plant, particularly the leaves. And you want to get the flowers and the leaves when they're younger, since they're less bitter. The smaller they are, because they're in that kapha phase, as we say in Ayurveda, even when humans are younger, when we're younger, we're in more of a kapha predominant phase. So they're a lot sweeter or less bitter when they're younger and less hardy. But really they've been used all over Europe as a spinach substitute. So you can use them and take the fresh young leaves, for example, and the flowers, use the flowers in infusion form and the leaves, or if you want to eat them in your food, you can fry up the leaves. For example, if you're making maybe an omelette or, or with potato or some garlic and olive oil with a sprinkle of salt, they're really good fried up. And um, you can use the flowers, for example, in, in wild flower salads. So they typically come out, as I said, in, in late spring, summer, throughout the whole period. So for me in Ayurveda, I interpret this as their bitter nature as balancing this pitta, so this fiery heat of the summer. So chicory is used predominantly all over the planet as forage for livestock feed, but it's also used by humans and has become particularly popular in the 21st century and in recent years um, for the inulin and the this uh, sweet as a sweet alternative uh, that's found in the roots. There's around 60% of inulin that's found in the roots. It's also, if you speak to many grandmothers and grandfathers in Europe, was used during the war period and pre-war period as a coffee substitute, particularly for the poor who couldn't necessarily afford coffee. But it's also a great alternative to coffee, which we'll talk about later. So you can really collect the leaves and the flowers and even the roots all throughout the summer and use them. The roots tend to be more bitter when they're untoasted and when they're harvested early on. And basically the roots can be used for things because of their bitter and then post-digestive effect of being pungent, they can be used for things like parasites or pathogens in the body. So as we said, you can really use the flower uh, all throughout summer, add it to your salads or eat it when you're out wild foraging or just for a walk along the road uh, to cool you down, to bring that bitter uh, quality into the body. And you can also use the leaves or use them in cooking at home. And then you can use the roots really as, uh, as they're more bitter when they're untoasted. You can even harvest the roots throughout the summer or most commonly they're harvested in autumn when basically the energy of the plant goes down into the roots because in this autumn winter period as it gets colder the plant obviously wants to conserve its energy from this cold so it really concentrates its energy underground. This is also in Ayurveda when kapha is predominant in the atmosphere, so it's this uh, sweet earth quality. 
Also in autumn and, and mainly winter, many plants send their energy down to the roots and then when it's really cold, they can actually turn many and use many complex starches and turn them into sugars. So this is why when the root is harvested in autumn and toasted, uh, the inulin in the root tends to be greater but also uh, it has this sweeter flavour to complement this bitterness of the, of the root when it's roasted. Wow, there's about... I don't know, eight to ten, probably more, but this is what I can see right now, wild butterflies around here, and it really just shows the importance of the need to, you know, let the, the wild edibles, even the wild weeds, which we know all weeds really have medicinal benefits, uh, grow because they're just attracting like wildfire, all this beautiful nature, this ecosystem here, these wild butterflies and bees, and we know that butterflies as well are pollinators. There's one right now. I saw a gigantic one just back there a minute ago, which I have never seen, but it was like this big with mm, crazy colours. So let's look at some of the uses and benefits of chicory based on the Ayurvedic properties. So the taste, according to Ayurveda, is bitter and the energy or potency is cooling. And then the post-digestive effect is pungent. So it's got this post-digestive effect of kind of heating and drying. The qualities are dry and light. So you don't really want to use this herb, the root or the herb, in case of extreme vata imbalances because vata is basically made up of the space and air elements, so ether and air. And any dry quality or anything light and cold in nature will increase vata dosha. But on the other hand, this is a great herb and great root for pitta imbalances. So because it's bitter, it's great for treating things like excess heat in the body, inflammation, anything to do with the blood and the liver. So liver disorders, cleansing the blood and excess heat and any kind of pitta imbalance. So we've just said it's drying in nature. So anything bitter and drying with a post-digestive effect of being pungent is great for detoxing the body on a cellular level. So in Ayurveda, anything that blocks up what's known as the shrotas or channels, so systems of the body, and basically can have this clogging up energy of being very heavy, stagnant, things like heavy metals that can attach to fats in the body because uh, they're more fat soluble. Things like uh, toxins uh, on a cellular level, bitter herbs, especially with a post-digestive effect of being bitter, of being pungent, sorry, are great for detoxifying the body. Since this herb has a drying potency, so it's great for shifting things like phlegm, mucus, out the body and cleansing the channels. So this post-digestive effect of being pungent also has the ability to catabolize and transform and move out toxins from the body. It's also a great diuretic herb, meaning it increases uh, the instance of urination. So anything that works on the urinary tract to help move urine out the body and help increase this flow basically is also great in terms of detoxifying because we know that uh, in terms of the bowels, the skin, uh, and in terms of sweating, also the respiratory tract, but also bowel movements and the urinary tract. These are some of the major detox pathways of the body that are essential to remain open and functioning properly so that really the body can healthily detox and naturally detox. Chicory is also great as a digestive aid for digestive disorders and helping things like bowel movements. In one scientific journal, Gut Microbiome, it was shown that chicory majorly helped to improve bowel movements and also helped to regulate blood sugar levels, particularly in patients with type 2 di diabetes. So chicory is really great in terms of regulating those blood sugar levels and helping balance the, your blood sugar generally all over the body. In another study from the journal Phytotherapy Research, chicory was also shown to have a thrombosis preventative potential, meaning it can act on the circulatory system to regulate the circulatory system in terms of reducing inflammation. So we've already said because of its bitter nature, it's great for reducing pitta dosha and things like inflammation in the body. So unroasted chicory root is more bitter in quality and therefore this bitter quality of the root and also the herb can be used to treat things like parasites. So the unroasted root is also has been used and is also a great antiparasitical.
Roasted chicory root, on the other hand, is a great alternative to coffee and can be used as a coffee substitute. It's also good to regulate pitta imbalances, as we've said, but also to somewhat regulate vata, particularly when a vata imbalance is caused from drinking coffee. So what does this mean? Basically, coffee is pH acidic, therefore it's going to increase the heat and fire element in the body, which increases the acidity of your blood pH. And this can cause all sorts of secondary effects like gut microbiome and microbiota imbalances, digestive imbalances, and long-term, a lot of um, heat-related issues such as inflammation, which can be systemic ultimately. But coffee also works on the nervous system by imbalancing the nervous system to some extent. It really depends in Ayurveda on your dosha and whether you have a, a better tolerance towards coffee. But because coffee has the elements and the nature of being also drying, acidic, so heating, but it has this drying property, it can also imbalance vata. So imbalance the nervous system, causing things like stress, anxiety. We know that uh, people who suffer from insomnia, for example, and mental, mental imbalances, regarding stress, anxiety, high-paced lifestyle should not really be consuming coffee in the short or long term because of its detrimental effects on the nervous system. So roasted chicory root is a great alternative to coffee. So you can either substitute it completely or do alternate coffee and chicory days, for example. My partner in the house, when he's at home, he has this chicory coffee substitute which is basically roasted chicory root roasted fig i think it is rye and barley with a roasted acorn and it's great and it comes in a powdered form and he just makes it a uh, hot tea and takes it in its instant form and then when he's out at work or every now and then with colleagues he might have a coffee as a treat but generally he's significantly reduced his coffee intake and really feels the difference so as we've already mentioned chicory root particularly the roasted root, has quite high level of inulin, which are basically act as a natural prebiotic or food for the gut microbiota and are really good for helping those beneficial gut bacteria flourish in the entire gastrointestinal tract. So chicory is also really good, as we've said, for bowel movements, to treat constipation, but generally to feed as a great food, natural food full of natural sugars for your gut bacteria. And some people might say, but hold on a minute, if it's got high levels of inulin, how can it also be good for diabetics? Well, basically, we're talking about natural sugars and also natural sugars that are combined with fiber. So I always say when you're taking a fruit, for example, it's always better to eat the entire fruit with the fiber instead of taking a juice or a smoothie because your body is not used to digesting a juice or a smoothie because of the cellular memory of the digestive system is adapted to our ancestors over thousands of years ago. So basically, refined white sugar and things like refined carbohydrates are going to cause you much more of a, a blood sugar and glucose spike in the system because these are much more easily digestible. And since they enter into your bloodstream much quicker, they cause this glucose spike in the system. Therefore, long term, uh, eating or consuming a lot of refined carbohydrates or refined white sugar can cause things like insulin resistance, where your cells are basically saying, I cannot take or process or digest any more sugar. There's just too much in the system. And obviously, this is also coupled with things like uh, inflammation, which if it becomes chronic can lead to many other health, um, systemic health issues. So it's always best to consume natural sugars in their natural form and in their whole form. So the whole fruit or the whole plant and not, and try to avoid derivatives because the more processed, the more men and women, the more we as people have touched and processed things that come naturally from the planet, the harder it is for our body to digest it and recognize it and therefore use it. And it can, it can often lead to toxic buildup or waste, bit which we call ama in Ayurveda, which is basically things that the body doesn't recognize as food for energy. So it's much better to try and keep those blood sugar levels to a low by taking natural alternatives, which might not always taste so great at the beginning, but long term you'll get used to them and you'll start to really enjoy them and you'll start to really feel the effects in your body of taking, for example, of having a, a cup of chicory or a cup of roasted acorn with rye or, or barley instead of a processed and somehow 
sometimes a quite um, acidic and very refined coffee that's not even very natural in its entirety because of the way it's been processed. So if you want to work with chicory and the energy of the plant, for me chicory is really a way to harness your inner fire but not let it get out of balance. So not let the fire become displaced and move elsewhere in the body. So really it helps you to, to calm this inner fire, harness your fire, foster the fire, but not let it get out of balance and, and expand. So I'd just like to leave you with this mantra. If you like, you can work with it and use it at home. So I harness my inner fire with love and compassion. I let my light shine bright and let my love expand internally and externally. I embody the infinity and fire of the stars along with the cool, calm night. Just as each atom holds an energy force, each star maintains its fire alight. So thanks for watching this video and being with us here at Gaia Ayurveda. I'm Fern Hales. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and share it if you think anyone can benefit with this wonderful knowledge about nature medicine. And that's all from me today. Stay tuned for more wild edible and herbal medicinal videos based on the Ayurvedic properties. That's all for now. So namaste. I've got a bit of chicory in my hand because I'm going to go make something later with it. Namaste. Lots of love and lots of nature's medicine.